Next up, our presenter is Brady Wegeson, and he will be inducting Jim Wegeson. speech prepared on my iPad here. It's not because I'm good with modern technology, it's just because we don't have any paper at home. <laughs> uh, first of all, I want to thank the committee, uh, the, many, the many other people who support the Crawford County Sports Hall of Fame. Um, what a great thing we have here to recognize um, the history of the sports in the county, like Davey said, um, and the many great athletes and coaches that have competed here. Um, in preparing for, for this, uh, this presentation for my dad, Jim Wegeson, um, I was thinking, what is a coach? Well, Google Dictionary uh, definition of, of a coach is an athletic instructor or trainer, not to be confused with an athletic supporter. <laughs> the younger people don't get that one. But anyway, um, according to skillsyouneed.com, in coaching fundamentally, a coach is, a, is helping the individual to improve their own performance. In other words, helping them to learn. Good coaches believe that an individual always has the answer to their own problems, but also understands that they may need, may need help to find the answer. Um, it says in Proverbs 27, as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. This is the job of a coach to sharpen their athletes and to prepare them for competition. Success in, in sports and in life um, is about making good decisions. That being said, sometimes a decision uh, someone else makes, even if they make it before you're born, can change your life. Um, and the decision that my dad made in college to try out wrestling, and then ultimately to coach wrestling, can you imagine trying out a sport in college? I just can't imagine. Yeah, I'm gonna play lacrosse, why not? But anyway, that's what he did. He was a football player for the University of Finley, and the wrestling coach came over and said, I'm looking for a few bodies. He went, I'll try it, you know. And uh, lucky enough for me, he did, uh, because it became clear early on that I wasn't gonna be tall enough to be a basketball star, or uh, big enough to be a force on the football field, or fast enough to be a track athlete, but wrestling I could compete in. This is a story for many wrestlers. Uh, which is a great thing about wrestling, and that many different body types and many different levels of athletic, um, athletic ability can be successful in the sport. Um, in wrestling, you're completely relying on yourself and your training. Um, one of the only things that can help you while you're out there is the influence, motivation, and sometimes calming and stabilizing effect of a good coach. Jim Wegeson has been that figure for Galleon Wrestling for over 50 years. He has coached uh, three district championship teams, seven league championship teams, 113 individual league champions, both in the NOL, um, a short stint in the NCC, and now the MOAC. Um, 57 state qualifiers, 21 state place winners, uh, five of which were multiple year state place winners. A state runner-up, three state champions, and won two-time state champion. Uh, many of these wrestlers were equally successful in college. Some of their accomplishments include two NAIA All-Americans, a Division II NCAA All-American, a Big Ten runner-up, and Dustin Fox, who was a Big Ten champion, a two-time NCAA Division I All-American, and, and an NCAA champion for, the, uh, for Northwestern University. All these stats and accomplishments don't tell the impact that Dad has had on Galleon Wrestling or to those Tigers who have participated in the sport. He instilled a few basic principles that are important not only in sports, but in life. Some of the most important ones that I can think of are self-discipline, work ethic, and, pers and perseverance. Uh, discipline is almost a dirty word in this day and age in sports. You see count, uh, countless examples of how a selfish athlete will hurt his or her team and themselves by being undisciplined. There was none of that in our wrestling room or wherever we competed. All right, guys? Um, uh, work ethic, that's the next one. 
work ethic was a prime focus in our program. No one was ever going to accomplish anything great without putting the work in on a daily basis. Maybe it comes from his uh, being raised on a farm in Western Ohio that instilled in him, and he in, in turn instilled in us. There was just an understanding that certain things uh, that needed to be done in a given day or in a given practice, and no one was going to do them for you. Um, one of the, one of the things I can I can think of as you know. And, and some of the guys sitting over there will, will uh, just one of the goofy things we used to do at the end of practice is uh, we bring everybody together. And of course, you know, you know anything about any practice, any hard practice, you know, you're you're drained by the end. You just want to get out of there, right? Well, he'd bring us all together, and uh, we'd have to circle up and we'd start clapping, okay? And we're, you know, we just want to get out of there. We're tired. And he would raise his hand, and as soon as he dropped it, we would have to stop. And if anybody clapped after the hand drop, do it again, okay? And it's just one of the goofy things we used to do, but what it was is he was he was trying to make us concentrate while we're exhausted. You know, he was trying to make us focus while we're exhausted. And also, we were, we were required to stand tall and, um, and you know, and, and look him in the eye and have a smile on our face because, you know, no matter what was going on in that practice or in life, you were, you were required, you know, to do that. And that was just one of the things that we did. That's the bad thing about the iPad here, is it? Sometimes you lose your spot. <laughs> the last value I want to talk about is perseverance. It was understood there would be challenges and setbacks during the course of the season. But what really matters is how you finish. Um, one of the things I can think of is, is when we were um, when we were training for our season, is that um, we would we would uh, progressively get you know the practices would progressively get harder throughout the season, and we uh, not so affectionately referred to um, our league tournament week as NL Hell Week, um, and this continued in the sectional district and state um, for those who were up for the challenge. This was to ensure that no stone was left unturned and uh, that we had definitely outworked our opponents. There's a common modern sports, sports philosophy that you treat postseason just like you would approach early season events or even a practice. I personally couldn't disagree with this more, and Dad didn't either. That's why he pushed us to achieve more at the end of the year and why so many of us were able to up our game when it mattered the most. Just a few, a few quick examples of the impact he's had on his wrestlers. Uh, a couple of the, his wrestlers that wrestled back in the 1980s, uh, um, Todd and Keith Kunze actually, actually rode their motorcycles up to Mississippi to come see him. Another example is Aaron Long, who, uh, who now is a wrestling coach in, in the state of Oregon, um, actually flew in to, to, to be there for his induction into the Galleon City Schools Hall of Fame. Um, you think that he had an influence on the lives of these men? I think we all know the answer to that question. And on behalf of my brother and I, and countless other Tiger wrestlers, we want to thank you for the many years of service and dedication to the program that you built and for investing in your wrestlers. I also want to thank my mom for the sacrifices that she made to make this possible. Like Davey and Joe, uh, mom and dad have been married for over for 50 years this past December. I want to present to you Coach Jim Wegeson. Am I supposed to talk after that? Nice job. Every coach had a coach that inspired him to be a coach. Ralph St. John's football coach, George Rafferty, <coughs> was that coach for me. I can remember exactly where I was standing in St. John's High School in 1967 after a meeting with Coach Rafferty. He helped me to visualize what he thought my future could look like in football. Football. Like my sport. I thought to myself, if I could meet as much the students and athletes as that man means to me, 
be a worthwhile way to spend my life. I'm going to be a football coach. I went to Finley College in 1968 to play football and teacher. My favorite coach was Jerry English. He was quiet, confident, there's no doubt who was in charge. He knew how to push the right buttons to get the best out of each athlete without screaming. Delphus didn't have a wrestling team, but I tried out for the wrestling team. I got to kind of put a little asterisk in there. We had judo. I did take judo in high school. So a little bit of carryover from one to the other. Because, you know, I might want to coach wrestling someday after I try it out. Fortunately, I was able to make the team, earn a couple letters, and go on. I had three opportunities in my life to become a head coach. Wellington High School offered me the head coaching job in wrestling in 1972 before I graduated from Finley College. But it was really hard to find head, head wrestling coaches at that time. And they were wanting to hire me to start their program for them. I turned them down and went to play football in one year. In November 1972, Jack Shutt offered me a teaching job at Science at Gary Middle School with the understanding that I was willing to coach multiple sports. I coached varsity football, city wrestling, middle school track. I never been on a track team in my life. I interviewed for the head coach job at Winford High School in the mid-70s. I thought it'd be a good experience for me to interview for a job. They offered me the job. I said, let me go home and think about this. I went home, decided I wasn't ready, and turned them down. I need to say a thank you. <laughs> 1977, I was offered a head wrestling job at Galleon High School. By then, I had coached youth wrestling at Galleon, started a middle school intramural wrestling program, spent two years as varsity assistant. I took the job. And have enjoyed just about every good thing that a coach can have happen to me in my career. You can read the book, you see what things we've been through. We're lucky. We've been very, very, I was very, very lucky. I think that some things that aren't in that book are these. Guy and wrestlers have gone on to be successful in all kinds of professions. <clears throat> but first two wrestlers to make it a state were a bariatric surgeon and a chiropractor. Physical therapist, just introduced me. Avionics expert sitting over there. Military academy grads. Militaries of all kinds. Airline pilots, school superintendents, principals, teachers, coaches, business owners, and too many others to list. I owe thank yous to a number of people and things. Galleon City Schools, thank you for taking a chance on me. I hope it pays off for you. <laughs> Galleon Wrestling Family, especially Coach Dick Fredmore, bring that name up again. Jim Ruth, who was with me at the start. Dave Coons, Biddy Program, while I was head coach. All the wrestlers, managers, statisticians, and in particular, four coaches that are sitting over there right now. Coach Kyle Vaughn saved my life. In 1999, I'd been a coach for 22 years, head coach at Gallion High School. I kept asking them to give me another assistant. I needed help. They didn't see it my way. I'll quit. I'll just keep on coaching. I'll get an assistant. Well, I didn't get an assistant. I got a head coach. I got Kyle Bond, one of the great guys that I've had the opportunity to play with. Uh, in the wrestling room with his guys. They're such hard workers. Matt Terrell, Brent Terrell, Rich Ullman, all sitting over there. They're still letting me coach with them 23 years later. I retired last year, but this year I found out that wasn't possible. I ended up back in the practice room every day. I needed something to do. Thank you to my family. Brady, I was just up here. My wife Sarah, Sam Maddie Maria, Sam's now an Otterbein wrestler. I got the opportunity to help coach him through his high school career. 
<clears throat> Maddie, an A student and cheerleader. Maria, too dang long busy to be here. <laughs> Martin is one of Jessica, and Alex, Kylie, Lincoln, Wilson, and Nico. All of them all live within one mile of each other. We have a great family time together. Last but not least, Elaine. My math is not perfect. <clears throat> she spent about 100 seasons at home. And also one of the voices on the team. 51 wrestling seasons, I coached football for 35 years, and 10 or 12 years of track. I also played golf. I owe you more than I can ever pay back. We'll try. Every coach needs a Hall of Fame wife. Coach Jim Wagenson, Crawford County Sports Hall of Fame, class of 2022-2023. 20,